on in. What's up? What's good? What's popping? What's cracking? What's percolating? What's really good in the hood? It is your man, Theo Butler, and welcome to the most exciting, entertaining, I did say that, exciting and entertaining, college football show on YouTube. It's Repping the Red. Yeah, y'all already know how we get down. Repping the Red. We talking college football, specifically top 25, specifically SEC, specifically Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, y'all come here. I'm playing that thing on the record. I'm playing that on the record. Before we begin, before we begin. Like, share, subscribe. If you like, leave a comment. If you don't like, leave a constructive comment. Why? Because if you know me, grow me. And sharing is caring. So, yeah, let's dive right on into it. As I said, the most exciting, entertaining college football show on YouTube. College football. Let's talk about it. It's not the top 25. Colorado. Colorado. Dad Gump. Deion Sanders, former head coach of Jackson State is making waves at Colorado. What look here. His 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 son, Shakur Sanders. This this is what we know going into the next season. Shakur Sanders is the starting quarterback. Right, right. Okay. Deion Sanders is the head coach, right? Right. He just flipped Travis Hunter last year, right? And if I'm not mistaken, he just flipped Kamani McClain. Some people have him pegged as the number one defensive back coming out of high school. So two years in a row, the greatest defensive back to ever play pro football has recruited two number one DBs back to back. What does this mean for Colorado? Not sure. They got a hard schedule coming up and everything like that. But what I... The question is not what does this mean for Colorado, because I say it's college football, right? The question is what does this mean for the rest of the teams in college football? <laughs> Deion Sanders, head coach, Colorado. I don't see him going to the pros. So what does this mean? You better make sure your recruiters are on top of their six. Because Deion Sanders, I hear people asking questions like, how is he doing this? What do we have going on last year? Nick Saban threw Deion's name into the ring when he was talking about with uh, when he was talking about the coach at Texas A&M, uh, how they were going about acquiring players, right? Let me help y'all out in regards to Deion Sanders and tell you why this is a problem for the rest of the NCAA. Deion Sanders is relatable. See, he ain't got to send the assistant coach, the position coach, or a trainer or something like that to the kid's home. He can walk in himself because he himself is relatable. But like, yo, how so? Let's look at this for a second. You're talking college football, right? Want to get these kids come play for your team, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow you got to convince the parents that you can help their child become a better man. Well, Deion Sanders is a God-fearing a God -fearing Christian. Jimbo Fisher, that's what I was talking about. We're going to come back to the SEC in a second. But Deion Sanders is a God-fearing Christian. Mm -hmm. That gets him in the home. Deion Sanders was raised by a mother, right? And his stepdad, because his real father tapped out. He's relatable. Hmm. He's low-key kind of vain, too, in the fashion and everything like that there. Kind of like some of the young men whose homes he's going to be going into. He's relatable. He likes to play more than one sport, and he actually starred at Florida State playing baseball and football. He's relatable. He was also able to go out and enjoy himself, have a good time, basically have his cake and eat it, too, Go out, have a good time, and still show up on the field. Show up and show out. He's relatable. Deion Sanders is one of those cats that believe this, because I believe he's actually the one who started saying it. If you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you play good. There's a lot of kids that go to colleges that subscribe to that philosophy about how good they need to look in their uniforms on Saturday. He's relatable. 
He's also actually a recording artist. Did you know that? Yeah, must be the money. Yeah, actually dropped that song. You know how many kids whose homes he's going to go into that don't just want to play sports but actually want to pursue a career in entertainment? He's relatable. <laughs> Even the kid that don't want to do that, the kid that just wants to be a coach and everything like that, because Deion Sanders did start out as a high school coach, right? Yeah, he's relatable. Even the kid that just wants to be able to play football so he can be able to get him a bad one, i.e. an attractive-looking woman, he's relatable. Even the kid that wants to know how to get with that attractive woman, marry that attractive woman, have children by that attractive woman, and be a responsible father in that child's life. Deion Sanders is relatable. Oh, yeah, this is the problem. Because <laughs> he can relate in a lot of ways. Some of these other head coaches can't. These kids would be able to relate to him in a lot of ways. They can't relate to some of these other coaches. Deion Sanders has done it. He is in the NFL Hall of Fame. And let some experts tell it, had he taken baseball seriously, he would have undoubtedly been in the Baseball Hall of Fame. So here's what I can tell you. At the very least, the Colorado Buffalo is going to be able to play defense next year, this, this, this upcoming season. At the very least, they have a quarterback who's been groomed by Tom Brady, who is mobile and has a live arm. <laughs> Their schedule is tough. It is. It is. I, but, I mean, this is what you know. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, to the rest of the colleges in the NCAA, Just understand, Dion ain't the only person out there that you can hire that's relatable. Go see Ed Reed. He lately of Bethune Cookman. I ain't saying I'm just saying. Let's keep it moving right along. We just did colleges, right? Let's get down to the top 25. I low key kind of did that anyway. With, it, with what is going on? What is going on with Texas A&M? In Arkansas, I said top 25. What's going on? 28 players in the portal leaving? That's a class. You know, <laughs> that's a class. Arkansas ain't no better. 23 players entering the transfer portal, portal. 28 players entering the transfer portal from Texas A&M. With Jimbo Fisher as the head coach, considering what the class was ranked last year, considering what people expected them to do, during the season, that's 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 tough right there. 28. So can we just go ahead and pin in ask? Well, I don't know. Can we pin in Alabama being the West champions? They got some quarterback issues. We'll talk about that on the next episode of Repping the Red. But LSU is doing pretty good in the transfer portal. Transfer. Trans transfer. That's trans too much going on. That way. Transfer portal. LSU is doing pretty good in the transfer portal. So I know what Alabama fans are thinking, but can we necessarily say? Can we just write their name back in? We should be. But LSU is making some big moves and everything like that. Let's take a look at this. I want to keep right on going because I want to talk about this. Y'all saw the y'all saw the y'all saw the, the title. Is it NIL, NIL, or NDA? <laughs> <coughs> Woo, excuse me. Y'all like, what? Wait, what? What'd you say? I said, is it NIL, NLI, or NDA? Y'all help me out because I, I don't know which one it is. I know all of them start with, with N's. You know? <laughs> Shout out to the Florida Gator fans because I'm sitting up here looking at y'all. I'm like, Y'all got a lot going on. It starts with Marcus Stokes. You had him. And then he used a racial slur. Now, I, full transparency, I haven't bothered to read up on what he said because I'm like, what could he have said? <laughs> Along with a song that uh, got Florida to kick him out of school. 
And because I know the songs that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure there was only one word he used if, um, that, that got that snatched away from him. And I know some people are like, well, it's just a word. And I know some people have asked, have said, why can't we say it? Well, why can't we say it? You say it. Why can't we say it? That's been a question that's been asked since, I want to say since before I was alive. And I'm, I turned 55 this year. Why can't other people say the N-word? I'm going to help you out. And it's really just this simple. And I hope after you watch this video, we never have to discuss this again. Because I hope y'all be like, you know what, that make all the sense in the world. It's what what did your family tell you? Your parents, y'all, those of us that grew up around our parents and everything like that, mom, dad, grandma, granddad, and them, they, they can say whatever the hell they want to damn say. You couldn't say it. And what did they tell you? I'm grown, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it was some things you couldn't do that they could do. And when you asked them why they could do it and you couldn't, what did they say? Because I'm grown, damn it. <laughs> When you get to be grown, you can do whatever the hell you want to damn do. But until then, my house, my rules, you can't do what I do. It's pretty much the same philosophy, except I'm black. Until you become black, you can't say stuff like that. And that's, that's, that's what that is. I, I know it sucks. As a kid, it sucked that my parents could cuss and I couldn't. And when I say cuss... I couldn't even say damn. It sucked. I wanted to say damn sometimes. I had to settle for dang. And even then, I had to make sure the G was pronounced. Like, I had to say dang. <laughs> Don't let it sound like damn. Somebody give me that. So, you, you got that. So, he's gone. And then, you have Jaden Shaw. He of the... I signed the National Letter of Intent. Because of the name, image, and likeness deal that I had. But when that deal fell through, I asked to be released from my national letter of intent. I don't know what Florida's going to do. I don't. Tennessee is on the rise. We got that. Shane Beamer had South Carolina looking pretty decent at the end of the season last year. So what does this mean for the Florida Gators? I have a better question. How did we find out about that name, image, and likeness deal falling through? <laughs> How long has NIL been around? Two years now. I know it was soon as we said that the football players were essential workers during the COVID year, which was 2020, I know that's when we said, we, yeah, we got to start paying them. <laughs> Damn this thing. But how did we find out that the NIL deal fell through? See, I'm of the mindset that he's not the first high school player whose NIL deal fell through. He's just the first one whose NIL deal falling through became public. But now we know how many news articles have we read, how many TV late breaking news where a player was supposed to go someplace else and at the last minute changed their mind. Why did this one make news? University of Florida they backed away from their um, NIL group, the group that actually is responsible for raising the monies and everything like that for the players. But how did this make national news? I'm going to put it like this. I'm not much for conspiracy theories and everything like that, but um, shout out to The Last Dance because they confirmed, Nick, you know what I'm talking about, Nicholas Reigns, they confirmed why, why Michael Jordan Missed two seasons in the NBA. They did. When they told us that he was still getting them Chicago Bull paychecks while he was playing minor league baseball. If Troy's watching this, Troy knows that there's an issue, a subject that I just won't touch. Because to this day, I still don't know why Pat Riley took over the Miami Heat to coach them to an NBA Finals. I still don't know why he had to do that. And we still don't know why to this day, why Van Gundy stopped coaching. I'm going to leave that right there. But just like, because I kind of got my ideas, I kind of got my suspicion. 
I kind of got my suspicions with this one. <clears throat> I don't believe this was the first time that an NIL fell through. What I do believe is that this was the first time that an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, wasn't signed. Because nobody knew that. Nobody said anything. And usually when it comes to these kids going to these schools, when they back out at the last minute, somebody has a lot to say. Nobody had anything to say. Florida released the young man from his national letter of intent. That's a rarity in and of itself. He can go sign anywhere he wants to right now. Anywhere. This is a stain on the University of Florida going forward. I expect this to have an impact, negative impact. I can't say how much, but I expect this to have a negative impact on their recruiting going forward. That's that. All right, let's talk SEC. I know it seems like, Theo, you went college football and went straight to SEC. The news is in the SEC. What was <laughs> Listen, if we want to talk top 25, Deion Sanders, being who he is at the University of Colorado, it affects every top 25 school. Don't get it twisted. Him being at Colorado affects your recruiting. So that covers my top 25. We're not going to keep this too long. Georgia, a question we never thought we would have to ask. Who replaces Stetson? Bennett. That's an interesting question. I, I never thought we'd be here either. I never did. But we're here now, though. We're here now. Who replaces Stetson Bennett? There's been a lot of talk about Georgia being complacent and everything like that. And I get it. I understand that because they have more people coming back for this team than they did for the last team. Except for some positions. See, it's, it's some players able to say that, yeah, even though I played a little bit, they don't feel like they actually contributed to the team winning the national championship. And if, it don't matter how you feel as a fan. If the player doesn't feel like they contributed, I know my high school team won the state championship in 83. I played on that team, but I didn't, I didn't feel like that championship belonged to me. Right. <clears throat> so where are we going with this? We asked this question in regards to who's going to replace Stetson Bennett. I know there's a lot of talk out there right now to um, go ahead and get another quarterback and everything like that. I do. Um, there's a quarterback out there that's probably going to make his decision within the next um, few weeks or so as to which school he's going to attend. And I understand that Georgia is in the running for that particular gentleman. But let's look at what Georgia has on the roster. And let's understand something in regards to attitude. <clears throat> Carson Beck is a former five-star, if I'm not mistaken. Brock Vandergrift is a former four-star. Gunnar Stockton is a former five-star. You know what Gunnar Stockton wind up doing before the national championship game? He wound up doing something that Stetson Bennett did when Georgia was going to play Oklahoma in the college semifinals. He had to imitate the other quarterback. Much like how Stetson Bennett imitated Baker Mayfield, Gunnar Stockton imitated Max Dugan. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. But now let's look at this, though. Carson Beck, we've seen him get a few reps in and everything like that. I'm pretty sure Carson Beck is of the mindset he didn't win a national championship, and he's had to eat humble pie for the past two seasons because he sat behind someone who walked on. Someone who walked on, left, came back, earned a scholarship, started in front of him. You don't think Brock... You don't think Carson Beck has a chip on his shoulder? Five-star quarterback had to sit behind a walk-on. You don't think Brock Vandergrift, who's more mobile than Carson Beck is, you don't think he's got a huge chip on his shoulder? Something to prove? Gunnar Stockton, even though some are saying he's not necessarily in the running to be the starting quarterback this year, you don't think he got a chip on his shoulder? <clears throat> A.D. Mitchell has went on, hit the transfer portal, and moved on to Texas. This just in, Ra Rock Thomas <laughs> then got arrested 
for domestic battery and unlawful detainment. Facing automatic suspension does not. I, yeah, I had to do that. I'm going to tell y'all while I came back to that. Because there are receivers that played for Georgia last year that have something to prove. Receivers that even when Georgia went out and got Rah Rah Davis, even when Georgia went out and got Dominique Lovett, some of those receivers there felt like, because Lad McConkie is coming back, felt like, wait a minute, we here. We here. You felt like you need to go get them. I don't know the status, what's going to happen with Rah Rah. David, uh, Ra Ra Thomas, I will keep y'all posted and let y'all know. But an automatic suspension is on the table. Georgia is going to do their due diligence and find out what took place. But the services of Ra Ra Thomas, <clears throat> make sure I'm saying that right. The services of Ra Ra Thomas, look, they look kind of bleak right now. But we're going to see. We're going to see because even though you have guys on that team, just like I said, that contributed to the national championship last year, you have guys on that team that have an axe to grind because they didn't do anything. And do we think Kirby Smart is going to let them feel like they contributed to the team last year? Do we, let the, do we think the position coaches are going to let them feel like they had anything to do with that team winning the national championship last year? I think it's high time that we, 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 cause I get it. I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan. They, they, listen, um, they here now, they here now and they've got staying power. If Kirby's able to keep his coaching staff together, which we shouldn't even be looking at him to keep his coaching staff together because if we're saying he's the next, the next Nick Saban, Nick Saban ain't always been able to keep, keep his coaching staffs together. But what Nick Saban has been able to do is take those coaches that come to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and teach them how to win so that his program can continue winning. I believe that's what we have over there in Georgia. I ain't saying I'm just saying. Listen, I appreciate y'all for rocking with me and everything like that. We're going to come back. We're going to keep this thing going. There is no offseason when it comes to college football. Offseason, that is a bad word. When it comes to this particular channel, repping the red, we, we don't have an offseason. We got to talk college football every day. We got to talk college football every month. We got to talk college football every year. That's how it's going down. I ain't saying I'm just saying. Before y'all don't, don't. Click, like, share, subscribe. I ain't saying I'm just saying.